I'm very happy to be here. It's my first time on the Nilm workshop, but I've seen already five Nilm uh, workshops or conferences in the past have been uh, done. And uh, when I was asked by, by Bert from net to grid uh, to talk something about uh, a product, uh, the Yona product, um, I have to think about uh, is, it, is it a Nilm topic? And uh, it is, and maybe it could be very interesting even for you well, very technical interested guys, as I think, um, to know what what NILM can be done um, for an end customer product. So my name is uh, Peter Schulden. I'm working for for Energy SE in Germany. Energy is one of the big uh, retail and grid companies in in Germany. Um, they're actually merging with with Eon. Uh, maybe you have read in the newspapers um, the European government has uh, has allowed this merger. So, <clears throat> Eon and Energy are both uh, big companies uh, for energy supply in, in Germany. Um, and uh, before I'm telling you something about the product, I want to um, tell you something about the, the smart meter rollout uh, in Germany. Because the smart meter rollout is a, the basic for, for the UNA product and gave us a chance to do that. So, the German uh, energy market. Um, is about uh, 42 million households, so smart meters or meters. Um, there are about 1,000 energy retailers. Energy and Eon are only two of them. About 900 grid operators um, who are responsible for the for the smart meter rollout, and um, they have to do that um, until 2032. So, it takes a long time uh, to roll out all the smart meters in in Germany. But it has a, has a reason. They wanted to start in 2016, um, but they decided uh, to do a very special rollout in Germany. Because they have two different types of meters. And uh, let me explain what the difference is. And uh, this difference is very important for our product. In Germany, uh, we have two different meter types and only a very small group of customers um, are getting a real smart meter, what in most countries is a smart meter, a meter with a data connection. In Germany only 20% of customers will get such a smart meter. Um, it's a so-called intelligent metering system. About 80% of all customers will get an a dump smart meter. It's a simple electronic meter which has no data connection at all. So um, you have to read the meter as in the past one time a year and the customer gets a bill and it's the only contact point we as a retailer have with our customers. And um, the focus of, of, uh, of energy retail was a few years ago um, to make this dump smart meter even smarter. What have we done? So, in the basement of the house, it's a normal case in Germany, uh, the meter operator or the, the grid operator mounts a new smart meter or a new meter. And um, the grid company of, of Energy, um, they built a new one, which is equipped with an RF module uh, inside, which is able uh, to send data to a receiving unit. Um, the main reason why they did is uh, they wanted to, to make it easier, the, the smart meter reading. Um, instead of going to the customer's home and reading the meter physically, they wanted to have a chance to get the data out of this meter. Um, so they built a read device. You can see it on the left. Uh, this is the, the grid operator who goes, uh, walks by the house or drives by the houses and gathers all the uh, the data from, from the house. It's done one time a year or maybe monthly. We used um, the same interface and built the Yona box. You can see it in the customer's home. Um, it's a small, very cheap box uh, we de developed uh, together with, with uh, NetoGrid. Um, it's a receiving unit. We are using um, the LoRa uh, technique to transmit the data from the meter uh, to this uh, receiving box. This box is a simple gateway connected uh, 
to the Ethernet or to the Wi-Fi of the customer's home and transmits the data um, to our backend, to the UNA backend. It's done in um, one second data, in the best case, if the transmission uh, is not so good, for example, if the, the customer is living in the, in the sixth or tenth floor of the house, the connection is not so good, so we have maybe 10 second data or even 15 or 20 second data. But in normal case, uh, about 80% or 85% of our customers have a very good uh, connection, um, so we have one or two second data as a basic for, for, for Nilum. So what we uh, did with this uh, solution, we wanted um, to have a product. Um, the normal customer who gets a, the dumb smart meter, uh, he doesn't see any difference to before. He had an old meter, a mechanical meter, uh, and it's very boring for him to get a smart meter. There's a big hype for smart meters, but he can't see anything. But it's, it's more expensive for him. Instead of about 10 or 12 euro per year, he now has to pay about 20 euro per year for this new meter and he doesn't see any difference. <clears throat> there are some, some new functions in this, uh, in this dumb sm uh, smart meter. You can uh, store the data for the last two years. Uh, the user can, can see this data, uh, but there is no button or any interface on this meter. He has to use a, a lamp torch to blink signals to this meter um, to get the information on the display. So it's, it's not usable for the, for the user. With the so-called meter meter, we, we have the, uh, the name meter meter given by, the, uh, by our metering guys who developed the, the, um, the transmitting meter. Um, we, see, we can see if we can use this data, we have an, an, a big opportunity for our, for our end customers. To build new products, to give transparency over energy demand uh, to the customer, he can see uh, what's going on in my house, he can see the real-time uh, demand um, and even more if you have NILM. So we built this, this Yona uh, product, this, especially it's, a, it's an app for the customer, he only sees this app, he has never seen his meter in a regular case because a meter operator just mounted it and uh, didn't tell anything. And in the future, we want to use this NILM data, especially NILM data, for new products. Let me tell what the first Yona product is, actually is. The user has an, has an uh, app for Android or for, for uh, Apple phones. Um, actually, has about seven use cases. There are very, uh, they're oriented on, on electricity um, because we think that the user expects, at max, expects something concerning electricity. We made a, a, a big field test before we uh, developed this product. We have a test with about uh, 1,200 real customers. Um, we equipped them with some prototype hardware, so uh, a meter and a receiving unit. Um, and we gathered a lot of information from, uh, and feedback from these customers. We asked them, what do you expect? What, is, uh, uh, what do you want to see? And uh, we have some experiences um, um, about challenges and gaming. We have some gaming features in this, uh, in this uh, test app. Um, and the result was the most interesting thing for customers is transparency about energy, about their energy consumption. And things like gamification, maybe they, they will come later. Um, so this is a set of first use cases we, we already have. It's, it's a live, the real view of the, uh, <coughs> uh, here on the left. Um, you can have uh, some different levels of, of details. Uh, you can see uh, your demand in, in, the, in history. Um, and of course, you can see devices, and this is the most interesting feature for, for our users. We have uh, feedback from them, and they say, they say, that's what I want to see. The device the tile here, uh, the second from the left, um, displays how much energy, how much euro did I use on this day or on the last month for different appliances. 
for washing or for, for my fridge and uh, for my oven and so on. Um, you can click on, on each of these levels and you, you get a detailed view um, and uh, the user can inform itself about today, what, what's uh, the demand of today, how much uh, euros uh, did I um, use for, for my, for my uh, appliances. Um, up to a live view on the left uh, where you can see on second level um, what was the demand. On the right side the meter reading um, it's still necessary uh, to have the meter reading because um, this Yona app is not the official way we can, uh, which we can use to produce our bills. Um, we, or we, we still have to wait for a, for a meter reading from the grid company to build our bills. Because this data uh, pass we are using here uh, is not the official pass for, for billing. It has to be done by, from the grid company to the retailer. Maybe in the future we will change that, or we, we are allowed to change that. But actually, um, we have here the meter reading for the customer. He can check his bill. Um, entering some date in the past and uh, can see what was a meter reading on, on this day. Up on the, on the right side, the rate check. Uh, very interesting for our customers. They are paying a monthly fee. Um, and he, with this rate check, they can see is, there, is, a, is my monthly rate, is it too high or too low? Um, it's a bill prediction to the end of the, of the year. Um, when the customer gets a bill and he can uh, see in the app, will my, will my bill be higher or lower than I expect? And then you can change this, this monthly rate and adapt this rate to his predicted uh, bill. So this, this list of use cases is getting longer. Um, we are thinking about new use cases, but even for this uh, list of use cases we actually have, we have a, a very good rating in the app stores, very good feedback. So the customer loves this uh, kind of transparency he, he gets because he didn't know everything about energy uh, demand in the past. He only get one bill in the year, um, was shocked or was happy, I don't know. But now he has a real view, what did I use my, uh, the energy for? And um, yeah. You can read the feedbacks in the App Store, so it's, it's uh, um, quite successful. So we are thinking about new products. Um, actually, this, is a, yeah, this app is an informational uh, product uh, for our customer. It's, it's free of charge. Uh, they can use it um, if they get this new meter. Um, but we are thinking about uh, new products, for example, uh, NVRM is, is one of the companies belonging to the Energy Group. Um, they are selling a product um, with a happy hour component. Happy hour means um, the customer has one hour per day free. Um, actually, it is fixed from 18 to 19 o'clock in the evening. And in this hour, uh, he gets the, the, um, the energy for half price. Um, and on a monthly basis, you get this kind of report you are seeing here. Um, so he, he gets a report about his, his uh, different appliances, uh, what have I used uh, in this last month um, for any appliance. Uh, and of course, uh, the happy hour reporting, how much euro and kilowatt hours did I use within the happy hours in the, in the last month and how money uh, did I save. He gets a payback at the end of the year, so it's quite simple to bill that. Um, he gets a bill of the whole demand and gets a payback for the happy hour. This is a quite simple product, but it's uh, very su uh, successful at our customers because they directly have an influence on their, uh, on their energy bill. Another product, um, Maybe you know that Energy is one of the um, uh, one supplier of, of uh, smart home products in Germany, one of the market leaders uh, in this market. Um, 
And we have uh, developed an, an, a piece of hardware. It's called Power Checker. Uh, it's a smart plug, but it has the same functionality as this Yona box has, as you have seen in, in the slides before. So it's a, uh, it contains a gateway to the, to the uh, MIDA meter, to the Yona meter, and a smart plug functionality. And we will use this, uh, this piece of hardware to get to migrate Yona customers to smart home. <coughs> you can, uh, there is a simple switch function within the Yona app, so you can switch on and switch off this plug. And uh, if you do uh, want to do more, like um, time-based switching or uh, combine it with, with other smart home devices, you can use the smart home uh, environment and smart home, uh, uh, other smart home device to do that. So thank you, Peter. Uh, great, uh, great presentation. Um, my name is uh, Bert Lutje Beerenbroek, uh, CEO of uh, NetoGrid. And uh, last year I uh, had a short pitch um, and I spoke a little bit about uh, business cases and um, uh, real commercial deployments of, uh, of NIL. Um, and the organizing team of the NIL conference uh, asked me to, yeah, to uh, organize a keynote speech uh, together with Energy to, uh, to talk about what, not, what are the, um, uh, the requirements and uh, what are the conditions uh, that you need to meet in order to roll out uh, a NILM service in, uh, in high volume in the country. Um, and this is what, um, uh, what we try to capture uh, in this combination uh, keynote speech. So Peter spoke about what are the, uh, the company benefits and the marketing conditions you need to meet and the customer expectations on um, uh, a service. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind. Um, so in the Iona service, we're, um, uh, we're providing the hardware, uh, so the gateway uh, that is communicating with the meter, uh, the cloud platform capt capturing all the, um, um, uh, all the data and um, uh, providing the APIs uh, to build the uh, use cases in the app. Uh, we're not building the app. There's a, a third party company that has designed together with Energy uh, the, uh, the, the, the customer journey and the presentment of data. Um, but we do provide the NILM service, so the, the analytics of the, the data. Um, so what are the requirements? The, uh, the first requirement that, um, uh, that we discussed with Energy is that um, uh, an energy insight service is still a very uh, low interest product for consumers. Consumers are not willing to uh, interact a lot with uh, a service and they're not willing to to spend a lot of time to configure and train a service. So the service should be um, uh, without any configuration. It should work without any user interaction. Um, the service should provide daily uh, appliance events and um, uh, the, the appliance events should be accurate in uh, defining when appliance start, when they stop, and how much energy they consume. And that the level of accuracy uh, should be at 90%. Uh, if you're uh, below 90%, then uh, customers start to uh, call um, uh, support, they, um, they have questions, and they, uh, they start to distrust uh, a service. So you should be meeting the 90% level. And the aim is um, to give consumers insight in their uh, energy bill. Uh, and in order to do so, you need to, uh, to capture about 80% of the uh, monthly energy usage of a consumer. Uh, so the coverage should also be uh, above 80%. Now, in Germany, we had a couple of um, uh, specific um, um, yeah, requirements that were caused by the actual uh, meter installation, by the, uh, the infrastructure uh, that, that is used in Germany. Um, so due to the uh, RF connection with the meter and uh, the LoRa uh, standard that is used, you can be confronted with um, uh, varying granularity. So the granularity can go from one second to sometimes 20 seconds, um, and you need to deal with that. Um, and um, in Germany, all meters are three-phase. 
But depending on the uh, wireless condition, sometimes we, uh, we only have enough throughput to get uh, the total phase. So we need to deal with um, uh, data coming from meters that are uh, both three-phase and sometimes uh, single-phase. Um, the other requirement uh, in order to, uh, to deliver the service um, uh, at, um, uh, at the, 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 the budget, at the cost budget within an acquisition and a retention um, program, um, the hardware cannot be uh, more expensive than roughly 20 euros. And uh, the NILM service, the operational service, should not cost more than 5 euros per customer per year in volume. So those were the basic conditions we had to, to work with and deliver the service. Um, in order to achieve that, um, the, um, uh, we are limited in, uh, in what we can do in hardware. Uh, we are using hardware based on a Wi-Fi SOC in order to meet, uh, meet the, 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 the cost point. And the data we capture is not high frequent data, it is um, uh, standard um, uh, HAN based, so home area network based smart meter data, uh, one to 10 seconds. Um, and the NILM service that we, uh, that we run is run in the cloud. So besides the, uh, the license fees and the hardware fees, there's also the operational cost of running a NILM service in the cloud, which should be very low. Um, in order to, to reach these uh, requirements, we have uh, 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 models, we have built models with um, uh, a reduced set of parameters in order to run them very efficiently um, uh, every night. So our, our um, uh, service is based on a training period where we are uh, building models during a training period and after the training is done, we run the models every night and we disaggregate the data of the last uh, 24 hours. Um, the training period is um, uh, split in two parts. Uh, we very quickly build models that are not time-based. Uh, for example, the, uh, the always-on consumption, lighting, entertainment, the fridge. Um, these uh, consumptions don't have a start and a stop time. They're, uh, they're, they're, um, uh, they're, they're calculated on a daily basis. And then there's a whole set of uh, appliances that, uh, where we build models for. Um, that have a very specific start and stop time based on the operation of the appliance. And um, that second um, set of appliances require a bit more time, uh, 30 days, in order to uh, build the models. And um, uh, sometimes appliances are being used uh, only in the summer, some appliances are only being used in the winter, so you have seasonal influence um, and you need to be able to, uh, to have your uh, training process uh, operating in a recursive way. The, um, uh, the, the data that we capture from uh, smart meters is, um, um, is coming in Germany from a, a LoRa uh, connection, but uh, in other countries uh, data is coming from um, a, a physical port on the meters, uh, sometimes uh, via Zigbee Smart Energy, sometimes via an optical interface. So there, there are numerous ways we, get, uh, we capture data from smart meters. And um, we are building a service where the, um, uh, the actual um, service that we build is, um, uh, is not depending on the meter infrastructure. So we are agnostic for the meter in infrastructure. And that's why we first harmonize every data set that we collect to the uh, Zigbee cluster library standards um, in order to, to be able to build services on top of data uh, in a standardized way. So there's kind of an abstraction layer that is uh, meter and country specific. And on top of the abstraction layer, uh, the service is, um, uh, is the same in every country. Um, in that service, we, we, we support both uh, one and uh, 20 second data models, and we support uh, total and three phase models. So we build models um, if an appliance is um, uh, detected on a specific phase. We build the model on a phase, and we can, we can tell customers which appliances are active on which phase. And sometimes we have models uh, for appliances that are actually using all three phases in, 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 uh, in common. Uh, so even though we, have, uh, we are using three-phase data, we still have appliance models that are using all three phases. You have to think of electric vehicles, uh, heat pumps, uh, some ovens are using multiple phases. 
Um, there is um, support for uh, active power only because uh, most meters that we, uh, that we interface to um, only give us active power data. Um, in the Netherlands, uh, the new generation meters we're experiencing, uh, experimenting with also uh, reactive power. And um, in, uh, in Portugal, uh, the meters are providing actually uh, both active and reactive power. Um, and we're building models that um, uh, are using both data streams. Because some appliances are very, very difficult to disaggregate. And then Dimitris will tell you tomorrow more about um, uh, specific um, yeah, challenges we, uh, we see in building models. Um, but uh, in order to achieve our accuracy, we are using both the data stream from the active and the reactive power. Uh, in order to build models, complex models with more accuracy. Then Peter already mentioned in, um, uh, in his presentation that one of the commercial use cases for, uh, for NILM is not just um, uh, advising customers to, um, uh, to use energy in a different way or advising customers how uh, where the, 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 the energy bill is, um, uh, is going to. One of the use cases is also the upsell to smart home. And uh, for smart home, the, uh, there are a lot of use cases that are not directly energy consumption related, but that are very interesting to provide uh, and which you can actually build based on, uh, on NILM services. So one of the use cases we've built is um, uh, our models that are running on the hardware. So remember the equipment that, uh, uh, that we have to run on uh, is still very cost effective, so uh, around 20, uh, 20 euros. Uh, but we're running models, very lightweight models that are built in the cloud and where the parameters that we create in the cloud are sent back to the hardware so we can actually run them in real time. And those models can detect, for example, when your washing machine is finished and send a push message to uh, the consumer uh, informing the consumer like, hey, your washing machine is finished and uh, you can now unload it and load another uh, wash. Um, in order to do that, you need, um, uh, you need to have the infrastructure to have an always-on bi-directional communication with the hardware, which we have. Um, and um, you need to have an infrastructure where you build models not using high-frequent data, but uh, just uh, the data available from smart meters. The um, hardware that we provide, um, uh, we have um, um, built on a Wi-Fi SOC. Um, we have harmonized um, the same infrastructure on all our hardware SKUs. Uh, so we're, um, we're basically building hardware and we, we develop hardware as if we were developing software. Uh, so all the um, SKUs are using the same code base uh, with small adaptations. Um, the Wi-Fi SOC is using both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, I'll tell you later why Bluetooth, Bluetooth is so important in our business case. Um, and we're running on an, uh, a very simple RTOS uh, with limited um, uh, program and uh, data memory. The uh, different SKUs that we support um, are the standard gateway. Uh, the Iona box is an example of a standard gateway. Um, we support Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth as standards, and we have uh, LoRa, Zigbee, and other wireless interfaces on the gateway. Um, we have a, a, a plug. Uh, the Iona Power Checker is an example of the plug. It's a three-radio plug, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and, uh, and LoRa. Uh, we have a version with uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee as well. Um, we have a, a touchscreen TFT thermostat. Uh, which is uh, supporting again uh, LoRa and um, uh, sorry, uh, it's supporting again Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Zigbee to connect to the uh, smart meters, Zigbee uh, Smart Energy. Um, we have a, a dongle, which is our yeah, our lowest cost uh, product for the uh, for the Dutch market, the um, uh, Portuguese market, the Scandinavian market. Um, it's a product that in volume uh, can um, can be shipped at around uh, 10 euros. Um, and we have, uh, uh, for markets without any smart meters, uh, we have uh, built a DIN module that can be placed in the metering cabinet. Uh, and obviously this is not a self-installed product, uh, even though most of you here in the room could, uh, could actually install it themselves. It's, for consumers, it's not a self-installed product. 
Uh, but it's very easy to install. Uh, you just click the, uh, the clamp around the mains uh, stream with a single phase and a three phase uh, version. And um, uh, the, 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 the voltage we measure through the power supply, which are just a line and a neutral connection. So it's a, a very easy to install product, but it does give us much more richness in uh, data. Since you're in the metering cabinet, you're always within the Wi-Fi range. Uh, installation, again, uh, very easy via Bluetooth. And uh, we're measuring uh, voltage, we're measuring current, we're measuring real power, active power, reactive power, um, and we can oversample uh, and get much more granularity than just a, the one second data out of the product. I mentioned a couple of times um, during the presentation that Bluetooth is uh, so important to us. Um, one important part in uh, reducing the operational cost is actually the support. Um, um, we are really keen on uh, making the product plug and play. Uh, it should be as simple as installing your Chromecast. Um, and uh, we have standardized on uh, onboarding hardware via Bluetooth. So the consumer uh, can simply detect the device uh, via a smartphone and um, um, configure Wi-Fi via the Bluetooth interface to the device. Um, if you use other mechanisms like um, um, connecting to a Wi-Fi access point to configure a piece of hardware, definitely on iOS you always have to, 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 um, uh, to move away from the app and go to your configuration settings. And we have seen in the field that this is um, too complex for uh, the large customer base that we're trying to, uh, uh, to, to serve with the product. And um, uh, making sure the product is plug and play and that the installation is easy is a key requirement for a large scale rollout. And I believe when I remember the customer feedback, Peter, that the uh, appreciation of the hardware onboarding on Iona was between 80 and 90 percent. Yeah. Um, the onboarding is 100% uh, secure, uh, encrypted, and it's a, a proven concept. It's uh, the same onboarding Google uses for all their, their devices. As I mentioned, uh, we have meter agnostic hardware. So in uh, Germany, we use uh, the LoRa interface. Um, we have for every um, uh, meter, we have an interface, uh, either wired, wireless, optical, or via a clamp. And we have for all the SKUs, we have a uh, product which is uh, Wi-Fi based for the use cases where the meter is within Wi-Fi range and a LoRa based uh, solution for meters that are outside Wi-Fi range. Like in Germany, the meters are um, uh, in the basement, you have multi-family homes um, and there's definitely uh, not always a Wi-Fi connection in, in the basement. So we have a LoRa connection to the meter. Same in France, uh, there the meters are on the uh, fronts on the street side of the garden, and there, there are many different uh, countries where the meters are not within Wi-Fi range. So we've standardized on having a lower connection to the meter. The challenge to provide minimum <coughs> on LoRa um, is that um, uh, depending on the wireless conditions and depending on the, um, uh, the distance between the meter and the home, uh, you will get different granularity. Um, as Peter mentioned in, in his pitch, um, the, um, uh, the results are, um, uh, are, are pretty good. We get um, out of um, the, uh, the installations we have, we have more than 95% of um, the meters uh, on FSK. So we have a, a very high percentage uh, using um, uh, one second three phase data. Uh, but if FSK doesn't work because the distance is too large or the, 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 the wireless conditions do not support it, thick walls, uh, iron doors, uh, you name it. Um, then we are using a lower spreading factor um, where we basically compromise the uh, data throughput for range um, and we have less data to work with. And if you have less data to work with, um, you might, if the conditions are uh, more poor, uh, you might not be able to capture three-phase data anymore, and you only have one-phase data, the total-phase data. So you need to have a, a, a NILM infrastructure that can work with, uh, that can build models that can work with data that is either presenting the total consumption of the home, or data that is actually coming from a specific uh, phase. 
And you need to have models that uh, work with uh, uh, like high granular data and, and low granular data. So that was, that was definitely a challenge. Um, we have um, um, yeah, optimized uh, the solution that we are uh, deploying in the market over the last uh, two years. Um, and um, we achi have achieved to, uh, to meet the, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the requirements of um, um, capturing or um, uh, mapping more than 80% of your uh, consumption into appliance models and to achieve a 90% accuracy. Um, Dimitris, in his presentation tomorrow, will uh, tell you more about uh, how we are using ground truth and how we are building uh, a large data set in order to train models and to, to measure the accuracy. Um, but basically, if you look at the, um, uh, the releases, we are uh, running every quarter. So every quarter we deploy a new version of our NILM service to all our customers. Um, uh, we have added um, um, uh, both new appliance models, uh, so we're, uh, we're training new appliances and we're updating appliances based on uh, insights, operational modes that we get, um, new appliances that appear in, uh, in our customer base. Uh, so over time uh, our uh, solution is improving. And if you look at the um, uh, improvement we, um, uh, we, we've seen since uh, we, uh, we have started with the pilot in, uh, in Germany, we started with a coverage of about 45% and um, an accuracy of roughly uh, 80%. And by uh, optimizing the service uh, and optimizing the models on a monthly uh, basis, um, and we have a three months uh, rollout of new uh, versions, we, uh, we slowly optimized the accuracy um, and captured more um, uh, appliances and uh, captured more um, uh, models or usage models for the same appliance, uh, where we are now above 90% and we're above 80% um, um, uh, of the mapping of the total household uh, energy. That was um, my presentation. Any questions? <laughs>